In today's video, we need to discuss everything going on in the market. Volatility is spiking across the board and a lot of it has to do with Apple. Tim got cooking in the kitchen announcing a $110 billion new share buyback program and of course an increase to the dividend. The stock got rallying 7% in the after hours, but does the end justify the means? Today, we're going to talk everything Apple as well as the seasonality and hidden divergences that normally precede the all important non-farm payroll data. We have the stats as to what happens before, during, and after the data. We're also going to be discussing sentiment, the economy, and why we need to be looking at this chart. Is it time to hedge or is this time different? We've got a lot to talk about, so let's roll the tape. Welcome everybody to the Daily Recap Show where we talk about stocks and the financial markets. My name is Chase. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like this video. We're trying to get 10,000 subscribers in May. I would really appreciate if you go ahead, subscribe, share this with anybody who may be into stocks so that we can hit that goal by the end of May. Let's get into it, guys. A very green day, a very broad-based day, but it was led by the mega caps. Look at Visa, Amazon, Apple, Google, Meta. These guys all out performed including Microsoft right here as well as Tesla wasn't green for the day but it was flat and that's a stark difference to what the stock has been doing over the last year guys we've seen a bit of weakness here in financials particularly credit services by April Bar PayPal and American Express, we're seeing Visa and MasterCard come under pressure after MasterCard's lackluster earnings. And I think that's having an effect on the overall bigger players here in the financial services. But we still see capital markets doing really, really well. You know, this entire sector reported great earnings from Schwab to Goldman and then asset managers as well. The only real weakness we saw in an entire sector today was drug manufacturers led by Eli Lilly. And this just tells us that it was a risk on rally. I mean, we saw healthcare defensive sectors get Get sold off we saw the defensive sector telecom services get sold off right here and we saw less upbeat action in certain sub sectors here of staples so you know people were definitely favoring cyclical assets over defensive assets and we could definitely see that look at the worst performing sectors for the day xlu utilities right xlv healthcare they were definitely the worst performing sectors today i mean sure financials and materials were there as well but you have to understand that financials and utilities were still positive on the day up 0.25, 0 0.53%. And we look at the sectors at the top, semiconductors, regional banks, XLK technology, real estate, home construction. And it's a very clear trend. We're seeing cyclical assets, rate sensitive assets, risk on assets outperform. And we know that because look at real estate, right? And then we have home construction. Both benefited from sort of the rate cut narrative that's coming back into the market. And then we have technology, semiconductors, discretionary, software, XLC. You know, these are the mega caps. These are the big tech names. These are just cyclical assets that do really, really well in a risk on environment. And they all outperform the SPY. Stocks that underperform the SPY, you look at staples, right? GDX, XLI, XLE. And I think some of this had to do with uh, what's happening with commodity prices, as well as the PMI data we got right there. But let's hop on the charts and we'll talk about everything let's quickly talk about the indexes guys so look at the s p 500 nearly up a full percentage point same with the dow jones the nasdaq 100 up 1.29 percent look at the rsp up 0.62 percent today so the market cap weight indices definitely outperformed we saw that with the mega caps to be expected it doesn't change the fact that today was very broad based we then actually saw you know we're up another 0.5 percent in after hours here in the RSP, the IWM, the S&P 600, they were up more than 1.5%. Bit of weakness in the after hours, but look at the SPY up 0.24%. That's on the Apple News. SPYG up 0.58% again on the Apple News. I mean, Apple rallies, it, it, the entire tech sector rallies, the NASDAQ 100 rallies, the S&P 500 rallies. It's a very, very big player. But the story of today was something that was really underappreciated and it had to do with the 10-year yield. Okay, they're up a bit here in the after hours, right? But we go to the daily chart of the 10-year yield and we actually had the second consecutive day of more than a 1% decrease in the 10-year yield. And we could possibly be forming a little bit of a top year in the 10-year yield at the 4.7 range. I did, I do think the market got a bit ahead of itself with rate expectations, both here in January, February, you know, pricing in what? Seven cuts and then up here pricing in only one. Some people pricing in potentially even a high. And we look at TLT, right? We zoom out on a year-to-date basis. Okay, it's down nearly 10% year to date, but we keep zooming out right here. This was the October lows, and we're very close to this 82, 83 area right here. And I do think that, you know, if you want to get into longer term bonds, 
at this rate right here. It should provide a bit of a tailwind because we are sort of finding a bottom and you know you should have a bit of a rally up here to the 93 94 95 area i do think rates are going to pull back a little bit but on a long-term basis i wouldn't really hold bonds in your portfolio in terms of as a position for capital appreciation for yield for sure 100 percent, but not really for any long-term capital appreciation as an investment that's just the way i see it right now i think in a market in this market right now you kind of want to hold more stocks and commodities than you do want to hold stocks and bonds if inflation does get you know, sort of below that 2% mark, then you can start looking at bonds over commodities. But right now I do favor commodities as a whole. Looking at Bitcoin up 1.54%, is that after hours? No, that's actually the day trade today. Gold was down 0.72%. Silver was pretty much flat on the day, but look at the volatility there we're seeing in the chart. The dollar did lose ever so slightly. Not a bad thing. This is part of the reason why the mega caps did rally. You know, the dollar is coming down along with rates. And then oil, you know, continues to be in the 78 to $88 range, but it does look like a crude is breaking down here and probably looks like we're going to this 77 range in this area right here we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks now let's look at the s p 500 and let's start on the weekly chart guys so we do know this for a fact at the end of the day we are in a uptrend on the weekly right you can see that we're putting a low higher low higher low and we're trying to put in a higher low right here in this situation and it looks like we have at the same time as we put in our higher lows we actually gone put it an all-time high bullish and we've made higher highs along the way. Now, you can actually say we did put in a higher low right here and here, and that we are putting in another higher low at this point right here. But I really like to look at this as the ultimate low for this low right here, because these are, I would say this is more of the breakout from this low more than anything else. You know, we are putting in a higher low right here and we are trying to find strength to move on the way up. So the weekly chart is looking bullish. However, on the daily chart, we are breaking down a little bit. We are in a daily downtrend. You know, we're making lower highs and we're making lower lows relative to the lows put in recently. We have tried to rally. We put in a high. However, relative to this high right here, it is a lower high. We have then pulled back. Now we are putting in higher lows in terms of this low, higher low, and then we're trying to find a bottom right here. But what this market really needs to do is go ahead, rally, and break this 5120 area. And based on the earnings we're seeing with Apple, based on what we're seeing in the after hours, that could happen tomorrow, but it's gonna require a lot of rally because bears are really emboldened at this 5120 level. As it stands right now, bulls are looking at this 5,000 as a very, very strong support zone. Bears are looking at 5100, 5120 as a great short zone. And until we actually break above or below this area, that's gonna dictate the next move. Until here, we're in no man's land in this area right here. So it's really just who's gonna win, the bulls or the bears. But based on this price action, it does look like the bulls are taking a stand because we are putting in higher highs. And we actually did put in a high right here. We do pull back. As long as the high is met by a higher low, we can actually continue the rally upward. And I do see um, that happening, especially with Apple's earnings. You know, what is Apple doing right now? Let's have a look. You know, look at the post. It's sitting at 184. This is like a 6.5% move here in the post. That's really gonna support the market as a whole. What's the QQQs doing? QQQs is up half percent in after hours after being up 1.28% here. A lot of strength exhibiting here in technology, the leaders of the pack. And then we also have a look at stuff like Nvidia up 3% for the day, up 0.62% there. But all in all guys, you have the levels. If you're a bull, you wanna buy here at 5,000. You wanna hold the 5,000 line. If you're a bear, you wanna hold the 5,100. And if you're a bear, you critically want to hold that 5,100 area because 5, 100 is the gamma flip the second we get above there you, we start having dealer support of flows and then it's buy dip sell rips in your all-time high so if you're a bear you want to hold that 5100 area with your life your life depends on it your shorts depend on it your margin call depends on it now guys we are wrapping up a pretty big week of earnings right here there's been a lot of drama but today we are going to take a look at one of the biggest players in the game apple guys let's talk about apple you know they beat eps uh they beat sales I know there's an X right there, but they did beat sales just. Um, they actually raised their dividend by 25 cents. That's a 4% year over year increase. And then the board authorized another $110 billion in a share buyback program. Now it says here the stock was up 3.5% after hours. They're actually up like 7% now when I last checked. So very good earnings, not quite the dumpster fire uh, we were expecting, but this is still, by the way, like a negative 3% year over year revenue growth. So, you know, Apple's still contracting on the revenue side. And this is the fifth out of the sixth quarter of 
of year-over-year -year revenue decline. Definitely the buybacks are really helping the earnings per share front, but you know, this company is really big. It's really saturated, struggling to grow, especially with China coming under pressure. But it does look like this is an inflection point here for Apple, and we should really see revenue growth over the next coming quarters, which should really support asset prices. And I think the markets really like that. You know, they're saying, look, kind of the worst for the revenue side is behind Apple. We're seeing China have a recovery. We saw, uh, look at the K-Web doing really, really well. We saw Baba up like six or 7% PDD, JD, all those stocks were really up in the after in trade today. If those stocks are bottoming, that probably means the, the worst of the China economy is currently here right now. And we're looking towards better days in the near future. And that's gonna really benefit Apple. So that's why the stock is up very big in the after hours, as well as, you know, all of the money they're returning back to shareholders. And there was also a lot to love about this earnings report. Tim Cook said he's gonna be teasing a new product next week. I think margins came in line. They guided for single digit revenue growth. So a lot to like with this report. Maybe Apple has actually found a bottom here in terms of the actual revenue, which is really, really good. Returning cash to shareholders. And that's why the stock's doing so well in the after hours. The after now, quickly looking at our earnings scorecard, earnings continue to accelerate to the upside. So despite the drama you're seeing in these high impact names, the names a lot of news appeal like Starbucks, like FedEx. If we actually dive under the hood, you don't want to be swayed by the fear, uncertainty and doubt. S&P 500 earnings are coming in really good in aggregate at 6.6%. Start of earnings season, the expectation was 3.5%. Excluding this weird BMI adjustment, we're looking at a 9.7% earnings growth for the S&P 500 and that excludes energy as a whole. And on the revenue front, we're actually coming in a little bit better than expected. You can see that S&P 500 companies are growing top line, growing bottom line, and excluding some one-off charges, things are looking really good. This is exactly what you wanna see. And any dip we do get in the S&P 500, that is just an opportunity for you to go long because the fundamental picture is looking really, really good right now. Now let's talk a bit about sentiment, guys. So this is the AAAI sentiment survey, something we look at very religiously, something I like looking at. We've seen a recent downtrend here in bullish sentiment, but we have seen a pretty big uptick this week from 32.1% to 38.5. But at the same time, we've actually seen the bears hold the line. And that pretty much tells me that a lot of people here in this neutral position have just taken a bit of a bullish stance. And while a lot of bears are still the same from the same week, so the same people who are bearish are bearish, but those who are neutral are a little bit more bullish. And that does help the bull case, but we'll see how this unfolds. It has been a very turbulent week with earnings with data but the risk is still skewed to the upside and the sentiment is still bullish now with this bullish sentiment should we remain bullish into the rest of the year and what do the stats tell us and this data right here is the returns of the s p 500 after we have our first negative month after successfully completing a turn of the year hat trick now the turn of the year hat trick is when we have a positive december january and february we did have a negative april we were down about 4.6 after a vicious last day of trading took us down nearly 1% in the S&P 500. But the forward returns after the first negative month tend to be quite positive. You can actually see right here, one month later, 21 wins, four losses, very positive, 2.54% return. Three months later, 4.1% return, 20 wins, five losses, and then 8.58% return. Six months later, 22 wins, three losses. And then we actually have the max drawdown right here. Now, the max drawdown can be quite substantial. So we do actually get very positive returns. But what you have to understand is that, for example, this right here, max drawdown, 15.57%. That means that the markets actually did fall 15%, and that would represent a buying opportunity. So you can see that a Apart from two isolated years in 2011, 1998, the max drawdown tends to be fairly minimal. In 71, we also had a 9.5% drawdown, but there's a lot of years when it was zero and a lot of standard drawdown periods that I would call a standard drawdown anywhere from three to 5%, like we had here in 1950, 1951. And that just means in these drawdowns during this one to six month period, you wanna buy the dip and you wanna hold the line because higher prices do normally ensue. The stats are skewed to the upside to the bulls. Now, let's talk a bit about the economy. We've got the latest GDP Now data and we can see that Fed GDP Now was tracking at 3.9% that has actually fallen just about 3.1, 3.2% here in the Fed GDP Now, well above the blue chip consensus, which is sitting at about 2% GDP for the second quarter. Now I covered this in last week's video. Q2 GDP should be much stronger than Q1, making up for the weaker quarter that we just had because cyclical components of GDP will remain strong because of fiscal, but net export and inventory should add tangibly 
to the Q2 print. Now we got PMI data yesterday. I didn't cover it in yesterday's video, but we actually had a miss in PMIs. And I think this did help a little bit of sentiment. It did help the inflation story because we, we tracked in at 49.2. We were expecting 50. In fact, the trading economics forecast was 49.9. And this is a contraction. So PMIs did miss yesterday, but you have to look at the trend and we are moving upward and PMIs are finally coming out of this recession we're being in. And we're starting to see a real recovery in the manufacturing front. And generally speaking, the sectors that you want to be in during a PMI expansion cycle is actually financials, consumer discretionary, materials, and comm services. These four sectors provide the most outsized returns. But when it comes to the S&P 500, when we enter these PMI expansion cycles, we can see again, outsized returns anywhere from 12, 24, 36 months later of returns and gains upward of 20 to as high as nearly 40% here in the S&P 500. So as we exit this PMI, my recession, we do want to look at the stats and be invested in the right industries because we can make a lot of money out of this. And this is a reason to be bullish. PMI expansion cycles are normally very bullish for equities. Now that's manufacturing. Let's talk employment. We got the ADP employment data and it was looking rather strong. Change in US private employment here in April was 192,000. And you can see that gains in employment were actually fairly broad based. Apart from 20 to 49, we saw down 1,000 employees. We saw gains in almost every industry. Now it's not all sunshine and roses. We actually got the jobs data at the same time. And what we can actually see here is the jobs opens continue to decrease, but the actual job openings came in at 8.48 million. The consensus was 8.69 million. So we did miss job openings did miss by quite a bit. This is the jobs data and we are continuing to see this disinflationary trend. However, when we look at the bigger picture, job openings continue to remain robust and they are still well above the pre pandemic average. And this disinflation that we're seeing right here is nothing Nothing more than reverting back to trend reverting back to the mean. So now what about non-farms? Because that's the big print we want to look to. Now, BOFA here is expecting 250K forecast in April. Now, just for the record, we were expecting 213K for this print right here. It came in at 303. It was a huge beat. And we've actually seen employment accelerate here for most of 2024. Employment has actually been accelerating and that's really kept inflation a little bit sticky, particularly wage inflation and employee compensation. But on Friday, for the non-farms, we are expecting 250,000 payroll increase. Now, how do we play this with the S&P 500? I have the data right here. And this is essentially the five day, one day returns before the non-farms. This is the non-farm print. And then one day, five day, one month after. Now we can see here in, on the March print, we had 303. We were expecting 213K that did come in a bit hot. Now we did actually gain 1.1% on the day after. However, the five days after we did actually fall one percent six percent you can actually see we had a hot number here at the february print as well we were expecting 200 we got 275 and the one day reaction was actually fairly negative the five day reaction was negative too and the one month reaction was also very negative especially for a one month return now looking at the averages we normally actually do have a negative s p 500 one day into the print but we normally do print a positive one day after five days after and normally one month after now this is since september 2022 when we have been in this bull market. So do take this data with the grain of salt. It's not a full amount of data that we can really rely upon. That being said, we can still look at something like this and say, hey, these are the data points. And normally non farms one day before offers a good dip buying opportunity for us to go long to get outsized returns up to five days, one month later. Let's talk gamma guys. Very interesting. Not much has changed from yesterday. The 5000 level continues to be the put support 5200 the core gamma resistance and this 5100 right here is the gamma flip zone so you know right between 5000 5200 and 5100 is where the s p 500 is going to make its stand and we're clearly seeing that in the price action today we really saw a big rally up to the 5100 area here in the s p 500 and look if we clear that turn resistance into support we're probably going to buy dip sell rips all the way to 5200 we are incredibly bullish above this 5100 mark and look how good these levels are guys we we found support right at the put support. It was at 4,900. We then wicked below. The put support moved up to 5,000. We then used the 5,000, the put support as a very strong support zone. And we're now rallying back to the gamma flip zone. 
up to the 5200 area is the very likely scenario and the 5300 strike is building out but what does this mean guys if we're above 5100 you won't really want to just buy dips sell rips you want to have exposure to equities because we are going to go higher and i think you know between now and march and may opex which is the 15th i think that's a very bullish period especially with the amount of negative gamma that's in the tape and the fact that we continue to rally that is insanely bullish and do expect a lot of this negative gamma to start to roll off the tape into the may opex now looking at s p 500 seasonality guys so this is for the month of may from 1950 to 2023 the average performance in may now you can normally see we tend to have quite an upbeat start to may we sort of form a double bottom but a lower high double bottom right here and then we actually go on a fairly bearish run throughout may May, and this is where the sell in May trope comes from. Then around the 25th, sort of around this last week of May, we bottom. This probably coincides with OPEX. It normally always does. And then we do see quite a rally, which takes us from a negative return here in May into the positives. And we finish up about 0.25% here in May. However, this can cause a lot of grief and don't want to be shaking out your positions if that does happen guys do understand that we can get quite a bit of selling pressure in may it's just seasonality now looking at overall breadth this is actually a fantastic chart this is percentage of stocks above their moving average the s p 500 400 600 and the nasdaq 100 and you can actually see that the shorter term breadth metrics the five day moving average 20 day moving average as well as 50 day moving average are looking rather messy they're coming under a bit of pressure but these longer term metrics look at the 150 moving day look at the 200 moving day this is very very healthy right here so on a longer term basis things are looking really really healthy it's just on the short term it's not looking too good guys data tomorrow is the big one that's all you want to focus on non-farms we covered it in this video but what you also want to look at is the unemployment rate right here we're expecting 3.8 percent that's the consensus and then average hourly earnings month over month 0.3 percent just be wary bofa is expecting 0.4 percent and then average weekly hours of 34.4 so just a couple of things to be aware we have non-farms tomorrow it can get very volatile it's the thing that causes some of the most insane volatility particularly with currencies dollar with rates and that can really affect the inflation narrative so go in tomorrow expecting a lot of volatility but if you've made it up until here thank you so much for watching if you like this video please subscribe hit that notification bell like this video and leave a comment for the algorithm cheers